ever since the beginning of rise of kingdoms it seems like skill damage has been the open field meta and in particular aoe skill damage aoe skill damage is so good that e song ye who is one of the original commanders in rise of kingdoms still occasionally sees some open field play because of how powerful his circular aoe is and his fourth skill giving you a 50 percent bonus to skill damage but the days of aoe skill damage being the meta could be numbered and honestly i think the writing is already on the wall and i'm gonna go as far as to say that this time next year skill damage could be in its worst spot than it's ever been in in the rise of kingdoms meta and this video is going to be super important because it could help you plan for the next year of changes that could be coming to rise of kingdoms because you don't want to build your account in one direction when the meta of the game is moving in a completely different direction so that's what we're going to talk about today but first what's going on guys cheers yes that's right it is still not a blue monster still yes they're still out I'm going crazy honestly at this point ghost if you wanted to sponsor me okay my emails in the description below apparently monsters just goofing around these days okay I don't know what to do now before we begin if you appreciate videos that help you future proof your account in rise of kingdoms drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and consider subscribing okay now I have seven bullet points that I want to get through in this video but the first one has to do with the latest commander releases okay this all started with the release of Belisarius Prime I think that a lot of people can realize that Belisarius Prime coming into the game wasn't that exciting for a lot of people I think his expertise is very appealing he has really great utility when it comes to swarming things down but in general most players would agree that he's not a must-have commander and then we saw the release of William Wallace and William Wallace is I would argue maybe a little bit more exciting because he does have the smite talent tree which kind of pushes infantry in that direction but at the same time if you had Alexander the Great already then you didn't really need William Wallace and sure you could do a budget build 5551 and he doesn't need any sort of museum relics like Alexander the Great needs and so he's a bit cheaper to invest in but again he from my perspective wasn't a game changer he wasn't a must-have commander for me I still preferred running my Liu Che with my Alexander the Great and I got better trades doing that so here we see a second field commander come out that just isn't really that exciting i mean he's good uh, and i would argue he's better than belisarius prime but he wasn't that exciting and at the time of recording this we know that the next archer commander is coming out and i just want to be very clear i'm going to be going on vacation soon so i don't know when this video is going to go live maybe there's more information revealed for these new commanders but at the time of recording this video all that we know about these new archer commanders coming down the pipeline is that they are going to have mighty healing and they're going to deal true damage based on that mighty healing and i would say the community's reaction to these commanders has been a little bit lukewarm which is funny because we don't even have the numbers like they could actually be like giga chad broken but just the idea of healing in the field i guess people just aren't that excited about that so really who knows but i think this marks a big shift in the design philosophy of commanders especially following the release of william wallace being a smite based commander okay this will mark the second time in a row uh, that we see a commander come out that isn't based on skill damage now the open field archer does seem like it will have some skill damage but if it's used as a secondary then it will have true damage so there's a little bit of a little bit of gray area there we're in a transition period I would say but why is this so significant well if we look at William Wallace and we look at Belisarius Prime and then we look at some of the older commanders in the game like Guan Yu for example or in the case of Cavalry if we look at William the original William these commanders came out in 2020 okay 2020 these commanders are almost five years old at this point and they are still meta viable or at the very worst meta adjacent I would argue that these commanders are still part of the open field meta I use them in my five March lineup both of these commanders are there and they perform really well and I think this poses a big problem that the developers of rise of kingdoms are trying to solve because with commanders that are so old how do you push them out of the meta without getting things too complicated for example if we look at some of the earlier commanders in the game okay 
we can take a look at i don't know let's say charles martel okay his active skill has a shield and a damage bonus second skill gives him stats third skill is for his garrison fourth skill is counterattack damage and the expertise just boosts the second skill very vanilla okay very vanilla now as time has passed we've seen commanders let's use Harold. i know he's not meta but let's look at his skills okay he's got a, a variation on his active skill depending on whether or not he's surrounded or not he also has like a stacking uh, attack buff with a defense debuff he has a chance to trigger his active skill he has just i mean these are paragraphs right these are paragraphs on these skills and the commander has gotten more and more complicated and i think that that is also true for some of the newer commanders as well not to that extent i think harold has a lot going on there but my point is that one of the ways that they added you know or made the newer commanders more powerful is by adding a lot more mechanics a lot more things things that proc triggers different variations for the active skill etc and that gets confusing right the other thing that they would do to make the new commanders more appealing is make them stronger like literally just give them bigger numbers right if you look at nevsky he has 2300 you look at huo he has 2700 right and so here you could see that this strategy is just literally make them stronger make them do the same things this is single target skill damage and same thing with nevsky this is single target skill damage it's the same thing but literally just a higher number right there's actually just power creep built in there and that's not even to mention the fact that like this third skill is another paragraph right it's very conditional like there's just a lot going on here and so the developers of rise of kingdoms are in this weird position where it's like if they continue to go down this route they have to make these commanders so much better that they power creep even commanders like guan yu and the original william right and that presents a big problem because these commanders are already like if we look at huo we look at nezki we look at liu che these commanders are already so much better than the older commanders in the game like minamoto like Zhao Zhao, like mehmed like martel right like these older commanders really have a hard time keeping up with what we already have in the game and so if they keep going down their current path of constantly giving more and more and more skill damage and more things that proc and more things that occur debuffs and all this other stuff then it furthers the gap between the older commanders and the newer commanders and that's just not sustainable right it's just not sustainable in the long run they've been doing it for years now and i think that they know that it isn't sustainable for much longer and so one of the cool things that we noticed over the past year is that alexander the great has made a pretty big resurgence and this was a little bit unexpected right i didn't expect when liu che came out that alexander the great would see such a drastic improvement over the last year but what's cool about alexander the great is that he found his way back into the meta as a, a result of not only how his kit was built but also how a newer commander's kit was built and it didn't rely on alexander the great doing a lot of skill damage right he has some instant proc skill damage here but it's not like he's an isong yet he doesn't have a five target he doesn't have a circular aoe or fan shaped or whatever he's not built around massive amounts of skill damage he's actually built around instant proc direct damage and a lot of other factors right he has shielding he has a supportive nature to him he can't have his all damage reduced he has a lot of march speed a lot of stats he's got stats on his relic that make him even better here right so there's a lot to love about alexander the great and he's actually even older than some of the other commanders that we talked about here such as guan yu and the original william right and so with the implementation of a commander that is not based around skill damage he's based around smite damage and with the implementation of extra combo attacks we actually see the meta changed in a way that was unexpected and so instead of continuing down the massive amounts of skill damage path that we've been on for like five years i think with the introduction of these new mighty healing and true damage commanders we are seeing lilith officially start to break away from skill damage right infantry have already done it it's been almost a year since Liu Che was added to the game smite damage is here it is not going anywhere he's here to stay and I think now with this new true damage mighty healing archer March perhaps we're going to go down that route with archers where we will slowly start to stray away from skill damage and I think initially these new archers I mean look this is all speculation these new archers could be garbage and then they go back to doing AoE skill damage but I think initially these new archers could possibly pair decent with what already exists in the game for example 
one of the archers we know if they're a secondary and this is by the way the open field archer if they're a secondary then they have mighty healing and true damage and that could lend really well to players that already have either yuge leong or players who already have herman prime right and lots of players have both of them but if you have either herman prime or yuge leong or both then you could use one of those as the primary and then this new archer as the secondary and in that way we can start to stray away from skill damage without having to completely throw what we have in the garbage right one of these two commanders will still be used and i honestly think that this diversity is really good for the game i really do and the reason for that is because it gives us more things that we can play with and it allows the developers to sort of bring back some of the older things like alexander the great and sort of make them viable once again and it could present us with a new play style that doesn't even necessarily have to get rid of skill damage right like if your entire account so far has been built around skill damage commanders well these new commanders might not be significantly better to the point where you have to get rid of all the old stuff right you can still use it for a while but it will just present more options for players going going forward to choose new things now all of this in my opinion is exciting but you have to remember a lot of things so far have been built around skill damage so for example a lot of players have been opening wedge formation uh you know formation choice chests or even like your daily travel chances and things like that players have been focusing on wedge formation because this has just universally been sort of the best formation that you could be using for any troop type even to this day if you're running a single infantry march and then either two calves and you know two archers or three archers one cav one infantry whatever the case might be most of those armies can just use wedge formation and you'll be fine you don't need anything else even if you're running a cpo prime with liu che you still can run wedge it's fine if as long as you have like decent stats here you have decent inscriptions you'll be good but let's say a year from now okay infantry continue to go down the smite path and archers continue to go down the true damage mighty healing path and then we see with cavalry they start to go down the combo attack path because remember they did announce this uh new delta formation which is 10 percent more combo attack damage and i don't think that they introduced this just for Lee Che's expertise right i think they introduced this because more commanders coming down the pipeline are going to have combo attack damage and it doesn't look like it's going to be archers based on this upcoming release and we already know infantry has smite damage so it's probably either going to be cavalry or maybe they're going to give combo attacks to ranged units or maybe they'll give it to a new leadership release that's totally possible as well but one thing is for certain i bet combo attack damage is going to be some sort of troop type meta okay and if it's going to be cavalry then we see cavalry go down the combo path we see archers go down the true damage path and we see infantry go down the smite path and in all of those examples there's no skill damage at all and if there's no skill damage at all well then we have to change a few things we can no longer run ottoman empire as the open field meta this is like this the days of ottoman empire are over because why would you have five percent skill damage if a majority of your marches won't use skill damage and this isn't going to happen overnight this is going to happen over the course of the next year or 18 months or something like that and again this is theory crafting and my uh, opinion and what i'm predicting but it seems like the writing is on the wall right we see the new formation for combo attacks we see the new commanders have true damage we see the new smite tree it seems like the game is moving away from skill damage and that transition is starting now and that's why i'm making this video so one thing to consider is what's the new civilization that you're going to use when we start to move away from ottoman empire well i think for infantry the answer is pretty clear we're going to use france and this is great because the health here is for all troop types it's not just for infantry and the throwing axemen have the highest base stat health or infantry which is nice that's especially going to be good when you're taking things like true damage you're going to want more health because that's what matters the most true damage doesn't care about your defense and it doesn't care about the attacker's attack right so really health is even more valuable when you're fighting against a true damage opponent and health was already the most valuable stat anyway so that's really really nice or maybe we go down the path of rome for the march speed right i mean it, it's totally possible i still prefer france but that's something to consider and then when we ask ourselves about you know cavalry or archers well maybe for a while archers will continue to use ottoman empire because they do get more health they have a special unit 
they get extra march speed yeah you won't get that skill damage from most of your armies and remember this will be a transition period right so like you'll still probably run at least one army that has skill damage for a while so you know keep that in mind and so ottoman will still have that value there and then as far as cavalry goes i mean maybe players just stay as germany they just stop switching back and forth and they just say you know what i'll just keep the teutonic knights i'll keep the training speed i'll keep the attack and we're gucci or they could go down the route of Byzantium, which gives you extra health and more hospital capacity, which honestly is pretty nice in KBK. But all of this is, is to say that, you know, maybe it's Spain for the resource production. I'm not really sure. But all of this to say that, you know, we'll have a new civilization coming probably at the beginning of 2025. And that could introduce something new. That could be a new universal civilization, just like Ottoman has been sort of the universal war civilization. Maybe the next one is like 2% all damage or something like that, right? Like that would actually be insane plus five percent march speed and then you just that's the go-to i don't think they'll do that because that would be a little bit boring everyone would just use that but that's something that they could do as well so start to think about that but on top of that something that you really have to think about is your city skins right i think a lot of players have defaulted to simply just using twilight falls as their war skin this is what they use because it gives you skill damage even in the case where you're an infantry main you're probably still using guan cpo as a second march right or something along those lines one of your infantry marches is probably a skill damage march and your cavalry and archer marches are definitely skill damage and so in that world even though you run like the you know liu che william wallace or whatever the case might be Liu Che Alexander the Great, even though that doesn't really benefit from the skill damage bonus and you lose attack, the rest of your armies still benefit from this so much that this is what you run. But in the future, if we're straying away from skill damage, you need to start thinking about what city skins are you going to invest in moving forward? And I think, you know, we talked about this. I don't know when this video is going to go live, but St. Peter's Basilica, you might want to start saving up for this if you're an infantry main, because this could be your best choice unless you win a Zenith of Power or something along, along those lines, because 10% defense for more than one infantry march is going to be great. And you're only sacrificing attack for both of the other troop types, which is nice. Maybe archers go down the route of investing in the top copy palace, because this doesn't focus on skill damage. It gives you a lot of extra defense. You lose a little bit of attack from all your marches, but you also get some nice action point recovery as well. I think that's completely reasonable. Also, if we look at things like the divine abode, this gives you extra resource production and cavalry defense. If you're a cavalry main, right? So these are some of the city skins that maybe Maybe a lot of players haven't invested in or they haven't even considered because they have Twilight Falls and they just use this all the time. But these investments are going to take some KVK coins, right? You need to save up that currency starting now because you might actually need one of these other city skins moving forward if we start to stray away from Twilight Falls. And so all of that to say, starting now, you might want to consider saving some of your formation choice chest. You might want to start saving that KVK currency. You might want to start thinking about what civilization you're going to be using when skill damage might not be the just end all be all meta a year from now. And I think that th it's important to think about that now so you can prepare your account for if that comes, because again, I think the writing is on the wall with combo attacks, with true damage, mighty healing and smite damage. I think skill damage might be on its way out. And again, it's not going to be instant and you're still going to get great value out of your skill damage commanders over the course of the next year, maybe 18 months. But eventually we might be looking at a world where skill damage is phased out, or maybe we see skill damage phased out for a while and then it comes back. They release a new skill damage pairing and it's got 3000 damage factor, or whatever. But by adding that variety of different options, then it sort of slows down the just inflation of the numbers. And I think that's a really big thing here where we have 2700. How long until we see a 3000 damage factor? Just no stipulation like we I know we already have like commanders like Tarek, for example, who when they're expertise, it's 2500. But if you're surrounded, then you can deal up to another 900. So it's 3400. Like we're, oh, we've already broken the 3000 skill damage barrier, but we will eventually see a commander that hits for 3K with no other prerequisites. It's just vanilla 3K, right? So by adding diversity in different types of damage and shifting the meta around to different types of damage, it can slow the overall progression of those bigger number power creep uh, things that we're seeing while still adding more diversity and possibly allowing for the resurgence of older commanders to come back into the meta. And I think that that's really exciting. 
but I want you guys to be aware of this shift that could be happening beneath the surface that we are not caught off guard and realizing, oh my God, I've only been opening wedge formation. Oh my God, I don't have enough KVK currency to get a new city skin. I've been relying on skill damage forever. Start thinking about this now, but guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Do you think I'm right? Do you think we're going to be moving away from skill damage? And if we are, are you excited for that? Do you think that that is the right play? Do you want more diversity? I personally really want more diversity in how we deal damage in rise of kingdoms, because again, it's been a, we skill damage for years now. I think we can use a change, even if that means that we have to invest in other things. I think this could be good for the health of the game. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. While you're down there, drop a thumbs up on the video. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm. So other rise of kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing while you're down there and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.